Good morning. It's May the 22nd, Thursday. I hope everyone is well. Um, I'd like to take a few minutes this morning to talk about the uh, demographic transition. I've um, got a diagram to show you. I did some population pyramids earlier this morning comparing Afghanistan and USA and Mexico and the USA. I want to talk about the implications of that and what kind of what does that mean as a visualization of the demographic transition, the shape of the pyramid. Um, I want to make reference to the uh, Cole article on um, the demographic transition. If you've had a chance to scan through that, uh, you don't have to read it in detail, but get the glean the, the key features. We'll talk a little bit about that here in a minute. Um, it's really about the fertility transition, going from high fertility to low fertility. Well, there's another aspect of this. If you think of the demographic transition in the diagram that you have up in the readings, and I'll show you here in a minute, there's also a mortality transition where you go from um, high fertility to low fertility, high mortality to low mortality. Uh, high mortality to low mortality is the epidemiologic transition. We'll talk a little bit about that and I have a diagram. I posted a diagram up on in the reading section. Uh, I don't remember if I did it in the reading section or just in the front section of the intro to, uh, intro to dem uh, demography in that section. Um, I've also posted a, an article in the readings that I pulled out of the mortality part, and that's Omran's, um, OMRAN's article on the uh, epidemiologic transition. So we get a balance here. Cole, even though he calls it the demographic, it's really the fertility transition, and uh, Omran will give you the balanced look on the mortality side. So the two of them together, if you'll read that Omran article, uh, scan through it before the end of the month, then you'll have a good sense of what the uh, demographic transition is. And the other thing that you'll have is, if you'll recall, our, our major equation, a way of thinking about this, is we're interested in the outcome that uh, is represented by, or outcomes that are represented by the category of formal demography. Formal demography are the measures in demography, the rates and um, other kinds of measures, uh, fertility, mortality, migration, uh, life expectancy, other things that we'll take a look at that are uh, formal demographic measures. Now that's the outcome, formal demography equals social demography. So on the right hand side of the equation is social demography. These are the things that we're going to look at, social contextual issues, uh, sociological perspectives on formal mor uh, mortality that we will use to try and explain um, how it is that fertility declines, what's going on on the right-hand side of the equation that influences that. For example, perhaps it's the case, and it is the case, that as um, you know, married couples, say, are two career couples, and they may make a decision um, to, be, to control um, their um, birth rate, in other words, parity specific, not have a child for three or four years, uh, have one, wait another two or three years, have another, as opposed to natural fertility, which we'll talk about in somewhat more detail when we get to the fertility part, but um, Cole talks about it. The natural fertility is the, um, say, the um, reproductive life of a uh, woman between the ages of 15 and 40 and um, could conceivably have a child every year, 20 children or 25 children, um, that, that sort of total fertility. Um, but as the changes in the uh, social demographics happen, then ch decisions are made not to do that. In fact, the, one of the things that Cole talks about with that is what he calls the calculus of choice that as uh, contraceptive measures become more widely available, people become aware of the availability of those, and uh, maybe they have reasons not to have so many children, then um, the calculus of choice, they can bring that in to the decisions they make as a couple to uh, control the fertility and be parity specific rather than natural fertility. We'll talk more about that next year, or uh, in the next segment on fertility, but that's a key piece of what Cole is talking about in his demographic transition article. Okay, well let's let's move on here for a second. This is the um, this is the demographic transition. Let me sit up here a little bit. This is the demographic uh, transition. Um, I'm gonna pull this down a little. This is the demographic transition uh, document that you have on your uh, in the readings, and you'll see over here on the right. Uh, you see both high 
and mortality and high fertility. Very considerable variability. Um, lots of things that are uh, climatic, environmental things that are influencing all of these. A lot of a lot of squiggliness. Uh, not really any trends except that it's, that it's high. And then as we get into what is the urbanizing, this is pre-modern, as we get into the urbanizing part here, you can see that uh, mortality begins to plummet, drops quite a bit, uh, and continues down into uh, modern times and keeps on going. This is where we are now out here somewhere. And then you can see that the squiggliness, shall we say, of the fertility continues. Um, the drop in mortality is an influence of the contextual things, changes in sanitation, uh, fecal contaminants removed from the soil because of flush toilets and all of that sort of thing, screens on windows, uh, things that um, move from a uh, mortality from um, infectious disease to a mortality of chronic disease. This is, in fact, the epidemiologic transition. We'll look at it again here in a minute in another diagram. But here, this continues to happen. The movement in fertility remains high for a while until the calculus of choice becomes embedded in, the, in society and people begin to realize that if I'm looking for education or employment, couples, that maybe we need to choose not to have so many children. And so by the time you get into the more modern times, um, the contraception and decisions are being made, um, or in a Catholic tradition, they're, they're controlling their, uh, in, a, in a traditional way, rhythm method, controlling their fertility. And, um, and you can see here that both fertility and mortality begin to, are dropping substantially. And this line right here is the size, of, is the population. So that you can see that as mortality begins to drop, the population begins to go up. And then as fertility begins to drop, you can see that um, uh, population continues to grow, and then it begins to plateau. And we'll talk about that later in the semester. Why does it plateau? Uh, it has a lot to do with your ecological uh, footprint. It is a saturation of population in relation to um, resources. So um, this is a key way of thinking about this. Uh, demography is theoretical in a way, but it's really a, a more of a descriptive science. Uh, as you can see, there's no explanations as why is this happening other than that you can get a sense in the background. These represent these uh, vertical areas here, represent the social demographic influence on the formal demography rates that are changing and in fact plummeting here. The social contextual environments of this uh, of society here are influencing that. So there you see a, kind of an influence or inter uh, relationship between social and uh, demographic um, uh, demography and formal demography. So keep this in mind, it's a good visualization. This is the more specific epidemiologic transition and here you can see where um, you're going from uh, the mortality rate is here and it's dropping epidemiologic transition as we move from um, infectious disease to uh, chronic disease. As infectious and chronic disease declines, uh, or I should say as communicable disease and infectious disease declines, uh, at the same time that's happening because of social contextual issues that are going on in the background, uh, we, we have chronic disease. Uh, here people might be dying at the age on average, uh, life expectancy might be um, 35, 40, or 50, and, um, and now as in our era, in the United States anyway, life expectancy, the average life uh, uh, expectancy of li the average year, uh, uh, what do you say, the average life expectancy of a population is now up in the 80s, and that's chronic disease. And we'll talk more about that, but this is the epi transition. In the United States, we went through the epi transition, the early part, say before 1940 was the early epi, and then as we became more industrialized and um, medicine was more available, we became more in terms of sanitation. What really drove it was the public health. The change in the context uh, improved mortality way before the uh, medical community and that sort of thing. They, be, they have been able to maintain what was accomplished through the more public health measures and changing the context. Um, okay, so um, 
those are the two images I want you to keep in mind, particularly the epidemiology or the uh, demographic transition as we move through the semester. We're going to be looking at what is, what is going on as we look at our two geographic areas, which I'll talk about not so much now, but next week in a video, uh, our two demographic areas. Can we see a demographic transition going on there, uh, comparing one place with another, or maybe looking at the same place over, say, from 2000 to 2010 or something earlier than that? So um, take a look at this uh, Coles article, uh, that feature that I talked about moving from uh, uh, the natural fertility to control fertility is a key ingredient of what's going on here. That is the drop, natural fertility, uh, 10, 15 children uh, on average to two to three children on average, and the social demographic background represented by those vertical pieces in the demographic transition um, diagram that we saw a minute ago. And we'll explore all of that in depth. Uh, don't pay any attention too much to, unless you want to, to the mathematics in here. But I think uh, this is a seminal work. I don't remember. It's uh, 1973. And uh, I think it's always good for graduate students to go back to the people that first began talking about this in a major way. Uh, you can find scores of articles, a tsunami of articles that have spun out of coal. In fact, there's been so many now that um, they don't refer to coal so much anymore as they refer to people who learn from coal. So we are now in the, er the time that we're in, we're like in the grandchildren of coal. Uh, but anyway, um, take a look at this and take a look at the Omen article. This gives you some, uh, not only the formal demography change, but some social demographic ideas about why that formal demography fertility is changing. The Omen article will do the same thing for you for the um, epidemiologic transition. It will show you that transition that we saw in that diagram a minute ago and give you some of the social demographics of why that might happen to the formal demographics. So pay attention to those two. Now let's take a look for a minute at population pyramids. Um, we're going to have, when we get to mortality uh, around the 1st of July, early July, you're going to do population pyramids as one way to take a look at the um, uh, the population structure of an area and um, what I've done here I had told you to go up to the uh, census and take a look at say Afghanistan and the US look at the population pyramids um, the population pyramids that I created today if you go into the demo uh, that there's a drawdown you know where you can go to the population pyramid there's one in there that has age by five-year age intervals um, age distribution by five year age intervals. I copied that. You can save it into Excel. I'll write you some instructions for that um, later in the summer. But here you can see what I've done is on here is the popular, this is all people in the United States uh, in 2010. You can see the shape of the pyramid on the right hand side, uh, all people. Now population pyramids are usually males on the left and females on the right. But what I did here was I put the U.S. on the right and uh, or on the left and Afghanistan on the on the right. To give you a comparison, here you can see, remember the, the base of the population pyramid is a representation of fertility. The broader the base, the larger the fertility rate. And you can see the two bases here uh, are very different. Uh, maybe the U.S. base is maybe only a third of the Afghanis, uh, Afghanistan base. A lot more fertility going on in, the, in Afghanistan. And then when you look at the side of the pyramid, remember the erosion. The side, if everybody lived who was born lived to 100, it would be a rectangle. If everybody lived to 100. This, what you see here, uh, this pyramidal, the pyramid shape of Afghanistan is a, an erosion of what would have been the case if everybody had lived. An erosion that represents the Afghani mortality experience. You can see it's very severe, se uh, severely eroded. And then when you look at the U.S., you can see the U.S. is now beginning to rectangularize, which means that people are generally beginning to live until 80, 85, and all of that. Over the course of time, if you were going to look at the 2050 projection, you would see that this continues to rectangularize and, um, and we'll see that over the next hundred years, um, uh, provided the environment uh, allows us to, uh, 
uh, survive <laughs> that long. That's another issue we'll talk about later in the semester, interaction between population and the environment and what we're doing to one another. I mean, the environment to us and us to the environment. Um, but you can see how very different these two uh, population pyramids are when you lay them side by side. Uh, one, very little erosion in the mortality experience. High, uh, high mortality, this is the demographic transition in the early days, Afghanistan, high fertility, high mortality. This is the demographic transition in the later days of that diagram we looked at a minute ago, low fertility, low mortality. It doesn't mean low mortality in the sense that nobody dies, it just means low mortality that we, uh, mortality is delayed until the later years. All right, so then let's take a look at this one. This is a comparison on the, here again on the right, you've got the U.S. and, uh, where are we here? Here is the U.S. and here is Mexico. Now you can see that Mexico is beginning to rectangularize, isn't it? You can see as you move up the scale of years, 20s to 30s, you can see that there's a rectangularization beginning to happen, but still a fairly steeply eroded uh, mortality experience in that pyramid of Mexico. We can anticipate and we can see it. Uh, if you go look at the 2050 projection up there on the on, uh, census, you'll see that uh, by 2050 it's more rectangularized up to here. So Mexico is already going through the social demographic and textual changes that are represented in that demographic transition of low mortality and low fertility. They still have, you can see, uh, a broader base, more fertility than we do in the U.S. And um, you can see that as all, although they're beginning to rectangularize, they have not begun to really fully rectangularize like the U.S. that you can see um, here. So the po what's cool about the population pyramids is they take, um, they take, if I can find the same here, they take the uh, demographic transition and give you a different image of it. Um, and you'll learn how to do these, as I said, in Excel. Very easy to do, and they're fun to do. And you can do different colors with them and label them and have a lot of fun with them. Uh, of course, these are in cut shades of gray. Uh, the ones that I posted up there on, the, um, on our website are the default colors that Excel gave. One's blue and one's purple or something like that. Um, so anyway, so I think that's enough for now. I wanted to uh, get you into thinking about um, demographic transition and the epidemiologic transition, the social contextual stuff going on in the background that moves the society from high fertility, high mortality to low fertility uh, to low mortality, and how mortality drops quicker than does uh, fertility. Um, mortality is influenced by contextual changes. Fertility is influenced by decisions individuals make. And so it's a delay, shall we say, as we move from uh, pre-industrial to industrial. Uh, the industrial automatically begins because of sanitation to change uh, mortality, but people have yet to make the decisions to begin to change their fertility behavior. Interesting concepts. And we'll talk some, about some even different kinds of variations on that uh, next month when we get into fertility. Okay, so um, next week, uh, no profs note this week or next week, just images and YouTube video. Next week, I'll come back on a YouTube video and we'll talk about those uh, human ecology papers this reading because they are a way to look at the social demographic. Um, in a sense, uh, what's going on in the background uh, here is ecological, social ecological things that are going to changing the full demography uh, as represented by the changes in the lines and the, the trend lines of mortality and fertility. So I hope you're enjoying the readings and um, I'll see you next week in a YouTube video probably about a week from now, Thursday or so next week I'll post a YouTube video. It also will be a, not only about human ecology but it will be a setup for the fertility uh, discussion of the two geographic areas. We'll be thinking about that. Um, then um, some uh, launch of fertility and then the week after that and when we're in the first week of today I'll come back and we'll talk about the specifics of the fertility exercise itself. All right so uh, we can come in. I don't know when you see this but uh, you may not see it next week but I hope you have a safe weekend and uh, I'll see you next week.